hello guys welcome to daddy share space and welcome to my channel so i have a micro update here so i've come up with an idea of how i'm going to try to manage the daddy share space daily and also some of my build videos so what i'm going to try doing going forward is i'm going to try to cut out a little bit of time out of my lunch break at work to record the daddy share space daily what that'll do is that will make the daddy share space daily a shorter video it'll basically be questions that i got before my lunch break and or maybe from the night before that i can come back and answer if i have the answer and then also like if there's any kind of tool news or any kind of just random ideas or random thoughts that i may have had i'll put that on the daddy share space daily and since I'm only going to be using a portion of my lunch break, that makes the overall video a lot shorter and it forces me to be more to the point when I am presenting whatever information I'm presenting. And you'll know the Daddy Share Space daily again by seeing that I'm in my vehicle. So you'll know uh, from that. I may come up with a thumbnail later that, you know, signifies, OK, this is Daddy Share Space daily and this is something else. I'm not sure, but for right now, if I do what I've been doing, which is essentially just uh, making a video and then taking a screenshot of one of the frames of the video and using that to make my thumbnail, that's how I make a lot of my thumbnails. If I do that, then what I can do is go ahead and make that a video. You'll know up front that it's Daddy Share Space Daily and you could choose to click on it if you want to and that will help in that way and then moving forward like when i get home today my goal will be as soon as i get home go in the shop and do something with my tools uh of course right now my shop is kind of in disrepair i'm still moving things around however i'm going to try to think of some ideas of how i could do something in the shop uh before i get home and then that way I can make that kind of footage and material as well. Now, one of the things I wanted to touch on in this particular episode of Daddy Share Space Daily is I was thinking about making, uh, so I have a bunch of lumber in my shop, plywood, I have drywall, I have two by fours of different varying lengths. I do have a lumber cart, which is full to overflowing. And I don't want to just throw the wood away. I, I really feel like the wood will be very helpful in helping me to build my skills by using, you know, old, pretty much like trash wood to build micro projects. And so um, I don't want to throw the wood away. However, there's a corner of my shop where there's a lot of wood just kind of laying there. And I'm thinking I'm going to build another lumber cart. It's just going to be a temporary lumber cart so that I can get that wood up off the ground and be able to move it about the shop so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to shift things around to do videos. So that's one thing that I wanna do. And then as I was thinking that through, I was thinking about maybe, I wonder if I could make like say a lumber cart that's almost like a desk. And I don't know if this is possible, but basically make it to where there's a top portion and a lower portion, kind of like when you go in your kitchen, you have the countertop, and then you have the lower portion where you have, uh, you know, dishes underneath the cabinet. But then you have the upper portion where you have dishes above the cabinet. I'm not sure about the uh, strength of something like this. But what I'm thinking is, what if I was to make, say, like a, a cabinet style thing, just out of two by lumber. The bottom part would house certain pieces of wood, uh, whether it be wider or longer, I'm not sure. And then the top part would have like smaller pieces of wood that I could just reach up and grab down. But the base of it would be just an extra work surface. Now, I'm not sure if uh, there would be enough support if I only supported that upper shelf on the back or maybe making like a 45 degree angle so that you would have some degree of through uh, through uh, like desk space or if you just do four posts so that it is more secure. However, um, you have to worry about having two posts on your left and two posts on your right so that it limits your, your um, side space. And as I was thinking about that, I was like, well, what if I use that station, say if I make it high enough to where I can actually work on that desk space, what could I use it to work on? Maybe small parts, small things. Um, if there's a base over the top, I could probably fasten a GoPro over the top 
uh, and make a permanent little like holder so that if I'm working in that space, that GoPro can shine down and I can work in that space. And that would give me another place to do things. It could be like small little uh, product reviews or, you know, something like that. Or um, I was thinking of maybe making it into as I'm trying to make uh, plan this vacuum clamping system. Uh, of course, it's not going to really work well on my MFT because it has holes on it. So what if I made a tabletop on this lumber storage cart where there's a small area where I just make uh, the basically like vacuum pressing, uh, a vacuum pressing station right there on the tabletop. So I could put wood there and for smaller pieces, I could either route or mark them up. I don't know. It's just, a, I have all these creative ideas. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Another thing that I was thinking about doing, which would help me to pull out my Festool table saw, because I really like the sliding mechanism. I like the compact size of that saw. It's, it's very unintimidating to use. I'm thinking about making a full mock-up of my garage essentially so i have to figure out how to do the scale so i need to measure the dimensions of my garage and then what i want to do is once i get those dimensions do the math to shrink down the uh to make a smaller scale model and then with that model like i would build like a four foot by eight foot table like i have in my shop currently i'd use that model to uh help me design my shop and that way I can make smaller items of what I'm envisioning so it doesn't take up so much time. And then as I do that on camera for you guys, you guys could give me feedback back to let me know like, oh, that's not a good idea or I wouldn't do this because of this or that. Because making full life size prototypes of stuff, number one, takes a lot of time. But number two, um, the design process, you may figure out, oh, that's not going to work, you know, because... I made that bench all the way over on, uh, if I'm facing the house on the right side of the garage, it's too high to really function as a workbench. But I only did that because my compressor was so tall. And now I've run into the fact that that's probably not the best way to do that. So now I'm gonna have to take that all back out and redo it and make it lower so that it's more on par with like my MFT. So if I can move forward uh, making some kind of a like a a model of my garage workspace and then try to tinker with things on a smaller scale because I can, you know, show uh, like a dimension of like you can see my MFT. You can see where my um, my big MFT is and where, you know, I'm placing the different tools. And maybe I don't know, maybe I could get an idea from you know, someone on the internet to help me design my space to make it both efficient and effective for me to do the things that I want to do. Keeping in mind the fact that I need to be able to clear space to be able to bring the car in the garage on occasion to do auto repairs if necessary. Anyways, I just thought that that was a pretty good idea of something to do. Um, I'll wrap up this episode of Daddy Share Space Daily with a question. Do any of you guys own flex tools? Do you like them? Uh, what are your thoughts? Because I saw that there uh, probably a year or so ago, there was an advertisement for a battery powered flex table saw, 10 inch model, which is uh, which provides the opportunity to a have a battery powered saw. But B, it has the 10 inch blade, so it's a full size blade. But C, it also has an adapter that they sell for two hundred dollars so that you could plug that saw in. Um, I'm interested in that saw simply because right now I have the Milwaukee M18 saw, which can use a dado blade, but it's eight and a quarter. I have the Festool table saw, and then I have the DeWalt table saw that also has an eight and a quarter inch blade that does not accept the dado stack. So I was thinking of replacing one of those saws with the flex offering because what it would do is give me the ability to go from battery power to AC when necessary. I remember when I first bought my Flex Volt, uh, there were rumors that Flex that DeWalt was going to make a battery adapter for the 60 volt saw, which they never came out with. And that's one of the reasons why I bought that DeWalt table saw, because I thought that that was actually going to come to fruition. I do, in fact, own the Flex Volt miter saw that does offer the um, battery, the corded 
adapter for that saw. Now, of course, I don't use it because I heard that it can make the motor go bad, but that's neither here nor there. So my question is to you, what do you think about flex tools? Would you buy them? I hear that some of these tools that flex make, they have like a founder's lifetime warranty or it's a limited lifetime warranty. So I don't know what that actually entails. I'd have to read up on it, but it seems like it may be a pretty decent gamble to get full size cut depth with the table saw. You could cut a four by four and half with that table saw, which is one of the issues that I had. I mean, if you think about it, if I was to get say a, um, what is it called? a Rikon bandsaw, like a 17 inch or whatever that size is, that's about $15.99. The 10 inch flex table saw is about $5.49 without a battery. And then if you get the adapter, it's like $2.99 or $1.99. So you're, you're looking at about 800 bucks for something that could plug in. And then if you wanted to, you could go out and buy batteries. I know the 12 amp hour battery is like 250 bucks. And from what I've heard, there's only been a small sample size of people that have used that saw online, but they say the battery life is good. I don't know. But there's that risk of getting involved in a new tool brand and, and um, you know, obviously having another battery to charge and so on and so forth. Now the benefit is if the corded adapter works, that would be great. That would be great. Um, another side topic on that is the flex tools kind of have a similar, well, not really a similar color scheme as the Festool, but if you look at the Festool table saw, it's, you know, got that grayish. And then you, of course, they got that lime green going on and flex tools use green as an accent color for their grayish tools. So I don't know, it would match better in the shop better than a Dewalt or a Milwaukee, but that's more of a vanity thing. Anyways, I'd be interested to hear what you guys got to say about flex tools. If you think it's um, something uh, worthy to try. And I thought if anything, if I got it and brought it into the shop and tried it, it could delay me having to buy a better bandsaw because I could cut four by four lumber in half. You could cut a two by four, split it down the middle and start making panels like that in a more easy way without having to flip the um, the actual board over. So that's a benefit. Um, the other benefit would be, of course, you have the option for battery power and or AC power. And obviously you guys know from, I've reported on many of occasions, my shop is not really set up to be running a whole bunch of different tools off of AC power without tripping a breaker. And so um, the AC power situation would be beneficial for like, whenever I use my joints or a planer, that's pretty much all I do. So the table saw would function in that same fashion if I did get the adapter where I would like, okay, I have these two by fours or these four by fours that I need to uh, split down the middle. Let me just go ahead and hammer all those out. And then I move on to the next stage of my project. But anyways, guys, I want to thank you guys for taking time to uh, watch this episode of the daily uh, Daddy Share Space Daily. Let me know if you uh, like the idea that I have about how I might uh, do the format going forward. And um, I will talk to you guys in my next one. Take care.